the reawakening of Finn Baker. Next. Welcome to the Stan Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues. Make it a point to drop in every week. Everyone who knows Vincent Lamont Baker will tell you there's no nicer guy. Polite, sincere, generous to a fault. This preacher's kid from quiet old Saybrook was blessed with height, 6 feet 11 inches, folks, and the ability to play basketball. Baker parlayed those gifts into a scholarship at the University of Hartford and ultimately an $87 million contract in the NBA. But today, at 38, Vinny Baker is almost broke. He struggles with alcohol addiction and depression, and if he had to live his life all over again, he'd do a lot of things differently. We'll talk exclusively with this big man who has a big heart and about the hard lessons he learned from fame, fortune, and friends. Here now is Vinny Baker. Vinny, welcome. You know, when you're on the show, man, you first rule is you can't outdress the host. <laughs> you're making me look bad. Oh, no. Welcome. Can't Listen, be. Thank you. You've had a charmed life, right? Uh-huh. NBA player, mm-hmm. scholarship guy, a uh, guy who came out of nowhere in high school, went mm-hmm. on to earn millions of dollars, fame, fortune, women. But at 38, you're coming to terms with something very profound for yourself, mm-hmm. that you are an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about how you came to turn to that and why you're ready now to tell that story and talk more openly about it. Well, I just think um, to tell the story of what I've been through and, um, you know, all the things I've been through in my life, um, God has blessed me with a lot, um, fame, fortune, all the things you mentioned. Um, and um, it's just at, at a point in my life where I just want to be um, educational and spiritual to other people. Now, spiritual is a big part of your life. You grew up as a preacher's kid in the mm-hmm. church choir, quiet old, old Saybrook. Again, still a very nice. Everyone who knew you said, what a great, wonderful guy. Mm-hmm. Where did things go wrong? Was it something that uh, was deep inside of you, or did the life in the NBA expose or uh, that temptation make you succumb to it? I think it, there was a lot of issues as far as things that opened up to me as far as, um, you know, um, when I got to the NBA success, um, was very early for me, um, all-star games, Olympian. Um, a lot of things came to me fast, and um, those were the things that I think, you know, um, hurt me as far as a person was concerned, not so much as a basketball player, but as a person. Things coming too fast for you? It, yeah, it came very fast. Um, you know, my lifestyle changed immediately. Tell us about when you thought this became a problem for you. Um, I just I just felt like, um, you know, at the time, um, certain things were going in my life where, you know, it was expedited. Money, um, power, fame, things that I wasn't used to. Um, and, um, you know, um, I had to figure out a way, um, try to figure out a way to make it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I couldn't make it right. Um, you know, the Celtics... Um, a great organization. They work with me, but with my issues, I, I, I um, didn't take the time I needed to take to make it right. Let's back things up. You have a 13-year NBA career, drafted in 1989, uh, I think, first-round draft point uh, pick in the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, from there, you Olympic team, 2000, uh-huh. had a great career, great contract. When did you begin to say, you know what, we've got a problem here? Because normally with alcoholism, the person who is the, the your victim, so to speak, is the last to say, I've got a problem. When do you realize, I've got a problem? Um, you know, I think um, in Seattle, um, towards the end of my Seattle career, and when I was traded to Boston, um, I knew something was going on um, that I had to change. But um, at the time, I really couldn't change it um, because it's a disease. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it affects 18 million Americans. And, um, you know, I just, at the time, I didn't know what was going on. And I had to fix it and try to fix it. And, um, you know, it was a situation where um, the support system around me was tough. So it was hard to... We'll talk about that support system. When you say tough, was it not strong enough for you? Too weak? Did they enable you in hindsight? Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, when, you, when you're making $13 million a year and, and doing certain things um, on the court, I was talented, 
all-star Olympian when you're doing certain things on the court um, a lot of times um, people um, just trust your talents they don't know what's going on inside your heart and your mind and it becomes very difficult to relate to people that you know I might be struggling with something you know entertainers um, basketball players NFL players sometimes it gets to a point where um, you know, they don't understand who you are as a person. They just look at the money, the power, the fame, um, the things that are going in your life where, you know, everyone's benefiting from it. You know, um, everyone's, you know, taking on the um, role of, um, you know, Ben Baker's a great basketball player, but he might be suffering as a person. You make a really good point. What, because of all the money, all the fame, all the fortune, they can't think a guy like you may have some personal issues that they want to talk about. They figure, how can things go wrong when a guy getting $13 million? But quite the contrary, right? You're a human being with emotions and feelings and things to battle. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, um, my father's a, a Baptist minister, mm -hmm. and um, I have a great background. My parents raised me well. I grew up in Osaba, Connecticut, a great community. Um, but um, success came fast. Again, success came fast for me. And um, a lot of times people, you know, they'll look at you and say, this is our guy, our hero. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, heroes fall. Um, heroes have problems. Hero, heroes have situations that they go through. And a lot of times um, people don't jump to help heroic people. They don't jump to help heroes. Um, and so sometimes as a hero, you sit on that island. Mm. You sit on that island like, gosh, no one's really, you know, they just know me as this person. Right. Um, it's like they don't know me as the, the person that needs some help, you know, that... Um, struggles with an, a, an addiction that 18 million people in America struggle with. Now, your dad's a preacher, you mentioned. It's almost like being a preacher, right, where you're always counseling people. Mm -hmm. But who counsels the preacher when the preacher has issues, right? right. And that's what you're really saying here. Everyone thinks that you have all the answers. You right. can solve everything with the money. You have everything going on. But So what kind of things were bothering you? Was it personal? Was it women? Money? What kind of things did you want to talk about? I think, I think in, in, in the entertainment business, whether it's um, basketball, um, whether it's sports, entertainment, singers, whatever, you're going to be faced with issues that you've never seen before. Give me one. I know, since you're revealing that you have a book coming out pretty soon, give me one because people are curious. What's a personal issue? I'm going to assume at some point women issues were, were, were there. Fair to say? Fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting somewhere, right? All right Fair so, to say. So, so, so women issues, right? So there's an example. You have an issue. You want someone to talk to. So who do you finally end up confiding with? you got a problem. you got a, a relationship problem, no one to talk to. Who do you end up confiding with? Who do you figure you could end up trusting after all that? Well, I, I, I'll tell you, um, when, I, when I was um, um, 19 years old, I hadn't um, been with women until I was 19. Hmm. Um, years old and and um, so you were buck wild back when, when you had uh, uh, <laughs> so you were a kid in the candy store then, yeah. right? So when, <laughs> within three years, within three years, um, within three years, I was an NBA all NBA all star, right? Um, and so, with that being said, my lifestyle changed within four years. All of a sudden, you aren't chasing women; they're chasing you. It turned around right real it's quick, immediately. The, the, the quiet kid from Old Saybrook. Everyone wants to have his phone number now, right? Pretty much so. All Pretty right. much so. And it, it changed um, immediately. My life changed. Um, I was no longer the kid singing in the choir. Um, I was the three-time NBA All Star with the Milwaukee Bucks, and had access to money, power, and women. Um, things that I wasn't even used to. Um, four years previous. Mm, we'll talk more about that. It became a sugar daddy, basically, right? A, 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 a meal ticket, right, for them people. We'll, we'll talk more about that. All We're right. on to something now. They go both wipe our brow here. Talk more <laughs> about Ben Baker and come back with our exclusive interview with one of the great NBA players still reeling from financial and personal setbacks but poised for a rebirth. Don't go away. You are watching The Stan Simpson Show.